Now, you have a very strong South Jersey Strike Force team that you have to contend with today. Any strategies on how to contend with them? Strike more than they do. Okay, like that. No, we, we, uh, we know these guys. We've seen them bowl. Uh, they're good bowlers. We just have to stay in the match and uh, do our bit, not miss spares, because stay clean. All right. Uh, anything you want to say? Any shout-outs before we start the match? Just uh, thanks, everybody, for cheering us on, rooting us on, and go Goons. All right, good luck. Where's Chris Downs? Hello, Chris Downs. How are you? Doing good. How are you doing? Fabulous. Now, we chat all the time on social oh, media. We do. Now, this is the first time that, first of all, you and I get to hang out in person. Second of all, more importantly, you and I get to hang out in person, and you get a title shot at belts that the Gillers currently have that I'm pretty sure you probably want. We would like to have them, yes, absolutely. Now, they said that they're very familiar with you. How familiar are you with them? I've seen a little bit of their bowling, uh, not too much. I watched a little bit of their, their belt defense last month. Um, you know, they, they've definitely got some talent, so, you know, it should be a fun match. Uh, any keys, any strategies, any thoughts on your part? i got to put a couple strings together, fill the frames, make the spares, uh, put the pressure on them, make them show up. Any shout-outs any shout -outs you want to make before the match? Uh, you know, family, friends, thanks for sh showing up online, watching us, supporting us. Uh, team, we are having a great show in this year so far, currently in first in the division. You have. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're doing well. We're happy. Yo, Chris, good luck. Thank you. You got it. So, here we go. I'm joined by one Shondite Faison, former Cruiser champion, who said, I want to get back on the list. Well, you should. And last time that we chatted, Shondite, you and I, you were also talking about possibly get, getting on the tag team list. Yes, I actually did. Uh, actually, myself and um, potentially Terrence Creedle of Team Beloved. That would be a, a great, great experience. It would be good to get back on the tag team list and to be in the same situation that these four individuals here are a part of. And we're seeing a little fa father-son tandem. Yeah, got, got a little father-son right over here. Jeremy will start the match over for Goon Squad. I do not know yet who's going to be starting for South Jersey. We'll find out eventually. Here's how this works. There's a lot of rules here, but the, here's the basics. This is a seven-game match, best of. Whoever wins four games first wins the match and either will retain or win the UBA Northeast Classic Tag Team Championship belts which are currently right to the left of me. Mm -hmm. Current champions are Goon Squad, which are the Gellers, and as you said, father-son team. It's very rare to see a father-son team in this setup. Usually you do see significant others, siblings, brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen boyfriend-girlfriend. I've seen married pair. I haven't really seen brother-son combo. We actually will see a couple later on today. Uh, but right now, we yes, are yes, um, we will. seeing a couple of bowlers starting right now in their first Andrew frames. Andrew Forrest will be starting over South Jersey Strike Force. You're right. You're right. We have South Jersey Strike Force going against Goon Squad. And right now, we have Andrew Forrest up on lane four to start. So currently, we have father-son tag team champions. Yes. Yes. And looking to defend. How many title defenses so far for them? They, they've had a couple. I think this is number three. Well, the third match that they've had the belts for, I should say. Forrest has got that backup carry and a nice strike starting with them. Oh, South Jersey. Great way to start. Yeah, both teams on mark. South Jersey has a little bit of an edge because they're up strike to nine spare. Now, for anybody that has not seen a tag team match, here's how this works. The first bowler must throw the first three frames of any game. After that, they can tag in their partner. They mm. must tag in their partner. Uh, a total of four times between them going back and forth. Whoever throws the first ball of the game must throw the last ball of the game. You can tag in the middle of a frame, not during the first three frames. Uh, but if you do that, then the person that tags in must throw the first ball in the next frame. And we're starting off the double. South Jersey strike force with a quick lead. Yes, shout out to the righty slash lefty, Andrew Ford. The wefty. Yes, he is a the, definitely uh, the a wefty. wefty. AKA righty bowler bowling on the left hand side because apparently people like the left. You guys made fun of me in the last match. Yes, What's wrong yes, with yes. bowling on the left hand side, sir? Oh, no, no, no. I never Andrew said Forrest it. likes it. If it's good I, for him, it's good for me. Never, never said it was wrong. I just said it wasn't right. Well, it's not. It's left. <laughs> All right. And Jeremy nothing was left on that side. Here. Yes, a very, very right. And nothing left on that side. Jeremy Geller with the strike of his own going into the third frame. Jeremy looking to double up. You see his dad, Jeff Geller, rooting him on. Then after Jeremy throws, we're going to have a decision to make. It's going to be a more interesting decision if Jeremy throws a strike. Maybe yes, maybe no. I'll explain that momentarily also. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just like you alluded to before, 
first bowlers that start must go for the first three frames before yep. making so a tag. So third, a little bit light, he's a two pin. Yes, very light hit, merciful nine count, leaving the two pin. Uh, the, the struggle that we've seen uh, for before, people playing inside, a lot of oil to play with on the inside. Down and in. Down, Down and, and in. in. That's your shot here at Polar City. I say that through experience. Yes. And I say that through the 15 or so uh, league titles that are currently hanging out in my garage. Yeah, and you're the right. And you know what? Down and in definitely did get a win earlier in the Cruiserweight contest. It did. It did. Now, the Gillers have thrown three frames. Andrew Forrest, this will be his third frame. When he is done, teams have a choice to make. They can either stay put or they can tag keep in mind eventually they must tag four times mm -hmm. as chris is explaining actually to the south jersey strike force fans that are currently made the trip to be here for us that ball's a little bit high Ooh, Ooh almost got away with it Eight extremely pin. high very high cannabis because he's high because he's high <laughs> not that sort of high well we don't know that i'm not going to judge uh, well, there you go you know but, but you know, Apen's still staring. They're going, hello. <laughs> hello. Hi there. Don't forget me. That's right. And hopefully he will not forget about this. Because oh, every They're frame counts. About him. Leaving at eight. Hope spare conversion is great. Spare conversion is great. Great on an eight. Now, Stout Jersey Strike Force is up by nine pins. They can tag if they want. They have decided not to. Christopher Downs is not moving, so Andrew Forrest is going to continue to bowl. You know, and speaking to, you know, righty-lefty com combinations in terms of tag teams, even though uh, we've seen that Andrew Forrest is using his right hand, plays the left side, we've seen a lot of successful righty-lefty combinations in terms of tag teams because you leave a corner on the side that you're not necessarily you know happy with leaving the corner and you can definitely tag in for them to make said corner pin very true another part of that rule if they complete your frame they must begin the next frame correct first yes if you complete mid frame you've got to throw the first ball in the next frame andrew has completed four frames fourth one is a strike jeremy is still in there for the goon squad they have not tagged either neither buller has tagged out Yes. Right now, first shot here. Now he's doing the strike before he throws again. Now, this is where it gets interesting mm -hmm. because the lane three has, has not thrown a strike yet, and they realize the same thing, and there's attack. Yeah, so we're going to see if right. Jeff can do if he if they do South Jersey. I'm sorry, not South Jersey Strike Force. Goon Squad will take the lead. Yes, and if they take the lead, then they start to make a statement in what I like to call the statement game of game one. This is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Yes, it can is he best double here? Yes, he oh, can. That then, was a good tag Very change. good tag. Good tag. Different look. A very um, good down and in shot, which I know Gordon Pepper is down very excited in. to see. Down and in. Not a lot of I rotation. I love some down and in. Now, it's Saturday. Saturday. Strike Force. They must throw a strike here because if they don't, they relinquish the lead. Now they still have not tagged. Chris Downs is still hanging out. Force is still up. There he goes. Ooh, that ball's high and flat. Oh, and he gets a wave with it. I thought that ball was going to hook in. It did not. It stayed right into the pocket. That was South a South Jersey Strike shot. Force. Nice and slush. Oh, it was. Beautiful flush shot. Now, again, they have not tagged. They still need four. And we are going into the second half of the first frame. And the reason why I harp on this and harp mm -hmm. on this a lot is that if you do not make the correct number of tags, regardless of how high you are in the match, you automatically lose the game. If you do in, in procedural tagging, as they yes. say. Yes, you Sixth must frame be here, within three the rules. In a row. It's got it. Got to be four tags, nothing more, nothing less. And they are, you're going to see a lot of different kind of strategies. Uh, you might see repeated tags. That's what makes it fun. Within, you'll probably see the um, hot hand strategy where you go with the hot yep. hand. You implore what I like to call seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they may, and they may wind up doing that. However, you usually like to do that when you have a lead build up, which is what they don't have at this point. Yeah. Jeff's still in there for Goon Squad. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say Jeff and not the last name because they're both killers. Oh, that ball's got to hurry. Oh, it, it did not hurry. Sort of does. 
four seven up there. Yeah, I don't know if I probably would have made the tag because Jeremy has thrown nothing but strikes on lane four. Mm. I probably would have made the tag on four, tag number two, then made the tag back and give Jeff the shot back on lane three. That's probably mm -hmm. what I would have done. Oh, a little because hot potato? Now phase, hot potato oh, a little, little hot potato, because now if they tag, you're looking at the guy that hasn't struck on lane three, now tagging back into the lane that he didn't throw a strike in yet. Indeed. And he's looking to do that, and again, I sort of question that strategy. You will make the spare? All, right, he does. all over that. All over that. Now, are they going to make the tag? Yes, they are, and again, I, I'm... Oh, no, they are not. Okay. Well, I don't mind that. Throwing us a loop. <laughs> no, well, that, that's a good non-tag, as I said. I, I think that should have been made one frame earlier in terms of a tag and tag back. And then the other thing that you do by doing it that way is that you only need one more tag. They still need three tags. They do. And South Jersey Storm needs four tags. Yeah, they do. However, South Jersey Storm sort of did get what they wanted, which is a little bit more cushion because of the non-strike. I expect you have to throw a strike here. He will. Yes, he does. All over that right there. Yeah, uh, but but again, I probably would have stuck your stuck, yeah, stuck Jeremy, stuck Jeremy, stuck <laughs> Jeremy on lane four. <laughs> yay spoonerisms. And put Jeff on lane three. Now we finally get attacked from the South Jersey Storm. Chris Downs is now in. Yep. First tag for them. Yep. Starts second frame. And I now see he's Chris got a little bit in. of a room for error. There's down and in. There's a strike. Well, Didn't need the room for error. There's one tag, and we have another one quickly out and in. Now this is again. That's probably what they wanted to do. The seven, eight, nine, ten strategy. Absolutely not a bad strategy at all because again they have the lead. They can afford to make. I don't want to say a mistake, but a non-strike. Right now they're hitting them. They're, they're swinging with left hooks and right hooks. Let's see if the left hook hits the same way. That's going high, but he see he's going with a very. Well, strong yet predictable surface. Something that will flip just right and it'll get right in the pocket and it'll finish right through. He doesn't have to power it through. He doesn't even have to force it down the lane. All he has to Five do is just let it roll. South Jersey Storm. And now they're making the tag over to Jeremy for right. that too. Five and as row. I said, I, I probably would have done that a little bit earlier, but better late than never. But never late is better. Well, never late again. Uh, Goon Squat can go out the door 248. Which is nice, but it will not be the 279 from South Jersey Strike Force if they go sheep. Yeah, mathematically, I think I like 279 better. Usually. Bot ball looks good. It is. Oh, it's good enough. Double for the Goonies. Ticket now, again, they have two tags left to make it. Now, logically, they should make the tag here, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Jeff is going in through tag. And even though and it of is, of course, I'm sure people are say are going to be saying, "Gordon, why are you telling me the strike? What's the strategy in that?" I've done pretty well on this. Got into the title match twice. I think I sort of kind of know what I'm talking about. Usually, once in a while, maybe sort of kind of. Yeah, you made it to the dance floor, and let's see I if have. we make the pins dance a little bit. And yeah. they do dance. They all dance. They all fall together. All fall down. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I would. I would sort of be thinking maybe they should have done that strategy a little bit earlier, but. It does put them in a nice position where Jeff can finish on the tag in the 10th frame. Yeah, so okay. now back to Christopher Downs. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be tag number three for them. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it will be strike number six in a row for them. Well, if it is, they can start thinking about putting this game away. And the interesting thing about you know, the 248 to 279 dynamic is you're forcing them to keep going. You're letting them know that you're right behind them. All they have to do is trip up. And Absolutely. it doesn't look like he's tripping up. He's more like Downs is tripping out. Now, going to the 10th frame, again, they can take the tag here, they can take the tag after the first ball. So they still have to take a tag. Force has got to finish this game. However, the first strike here, the game's out. Even with the mark, the game, depending on what the count is, the game is out. Downs is for game one. Downs is a strike here. And he Ooh. does. And, and that will take care of game one as long as, as. Force throws the last shot. <laughs> which Downs is tagging and Force, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And assuming that Force does not have a major brain fart and tag Chris back in, and Chris has just a major brain fart and decide to, mm -hmm. decide to throw it, which he won't because Chris Downs is much closer to hanging out with me and Sean Knight than he is going to the lanes. Downs is smiling at me as I say this. They will take game one. It really doesn't matter what force shows at this point, even though the strike's nice. 
Always that puts him to 269. One more strike will make him 279 game one. And the one thing that separates tag team from the other divisions is that it's more than the score. There's it tragedy even, involved. Yes. Yeah, it wouldn't even and matter. I say if that they were deliberately. Strategy because if you're doing it the wrong way, it's tragedy. No. If you're doing it the right way, it's strategy. Mm -hmm, exactly. And that would be tragic if you don't have the right strategy. Correct. And what also can be tragic is if you're throwing a whole bunch of strikes and you forget to make the right amount of tags and you basically um, did a whole bunch of strikes for nothing. Which we've seen happen before, it, yeah, by the it way. It has happened. Which is why I'm here giving you frame by frame counts and explaining what the strategy is. Uh, the Gellers are going to shoot 248 or probably somewhere in the 240s, except, and I say that, they almost certainly should have made that tag earlier in the sixth frame. Or maybe not, maybe it doesn't matter. Well, in this case, it really doesn't matter. Mathematically, they're shut out. They can tag, they don't have to. Now, you may not necessarily want to make the tag here for this reason. If, you, if they're looking for a look, mm -hmm. maybe you keep the other person in. You know you're not winning the game, so whether or not you get the right number of tags and doesn't really help you or hurt you. Indeed. You won't lose a match, you'll just lose the game, and they've already lost the game. Yeah. So maybe you keep them in there trying to find a different look. Maybe you go in there trying to find a different ball reaction. That would be the area check. That would be. Or in this case, yeah, area check. At the end of game one, South Jersey Strike Force 278 Goon Squad. Want to say in the 220s? Let's get the official result. I believe it was 208. I think you're correct, sir. Two, 220s would have been if they made the spare, which they clearly did not. Yeah, 278, 208. South Jersey mm -hmm. wins game one on the game two. Now, game two. And Jeff is absolutely correct. Whereas they started the match, so South Jersey starts this one, and Chris Downs will start this one. So it'll be Chris Downs versus Jeff Geller in game two for the first three frames. And for those who are not too familiar, can you tell us why Downs are starting instead of Forrest? Because Andrew Forrest started game one, so therefore they have to rotate. And whoever did not start game one starts game two. Oh, my Ooh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know what? It's Looks a, great it's up the there. Namesake. It's That's his all namesake. I can say. It's the namesake. Well, Downs knocking them all down. That was cheese. Even from you, that yeah. was cheese. Hey, it goes down Go like that. Go to your that. room and think about what you've done, sir. It goes down like that. It, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, Pop <laughs> is looking to get all 10 down. Pop would be the name of the Mac in Jersey. I'm Jeff Geller, and that's exactly what he does. Very good. So we got two strikes. Starting game, starting frame two. Let's chat with Jeremy since he's sort of staring at me going over to his food. Jeremy, describe game one because you guys bowl very good. They only made one mistake, though. Uh, bad. I don't have a lot to say about it. They struck a lot. They did strike a lot. Um, I threw it pretty bad. My dad got it in and didn't realize it. So on to the next game. The lefty is... Uh, had a lot of room so far. We'll see if that continues. We shall. Let's see what Jeff does frame two. Ooh, that didn't sound good. And that doesn't look good. Three, six, seven, ten. Not Jeremy said his dad stinks. I don't know about his dad. That's certainly a stinky shot, though. Well, it doesn't look like it smells good there. I mean, it's it not, not smell of vision, good. but I'm pretty sure he's not liking it. But it is, ma it is very makeable, but it is also missable. Right now, it smells like a 3 a.m. fraternity beer run. That's what it smells like right well, now. Hopefully, he's going to make the spare no. A little bit of hero ball there. That's one thing with makeable yet missable uh, split conversions. You yes. could go for it all, but or you can play it safe and go for the count, go for the wood. Well, even if he went for the wood, a big opportunity for South Jersey Strike Force to get a nice size lead here in the second game. Downs is up there, and this is dangerous because usually, if you're free willing, you usually bowl a better shot. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the let's see if the ups remain for Downs. Here's the free wheel, or oh. maybe not three six down. Three six ten did not go Downs. Nope. There you go. Well, he, now he's he, got to go Downs Town in order to make that spare. There you go. Well, he left the same order, but he just didn't have the side dish. That side dish was the seven pin that that Jeffrey left before. Just, just a reminder, Sean Knight is not the only person that can throw bad puns in our direction. Oh, yeah, I could throw them up or I could throw them down. You can throw them up, I can knock them down. 
Well, let's see if he knocks all of them. Uh, another one of those makeable yet missable situations. That's true. But he's Makes all that over one. that. Right now, that, that is the difference in this game. A make, make spare to a miss spare. South Jersey once again with an early lead as we go into the third frame. Green squad looking to hopefully jump on this opportunity. Even though they have an open frame, at least they're not dealing with a double. Exactly. At least they're only down 14. They could have been down by as much as 34. Mm. So they avoid that bullet. Down's coming up here. That ball's got to hurry up a little bit, but that lo ooh, that looks high. Ooh, and that, that is high. a oh, my four, goodness. Four, 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 four. We're not going golfing, gentlemen. We're going bowling, except neither of you guys can figure out the difference at this moment. No, you went spelunking. You didn't go golfing. You're right. And we got the Hall of Fame four horsemen that just showed yeah. up right now on camera. We have the three, six. Four, three, four, six, seven. And I say spelunking because they went deep six. <laughs> Are we going to make the spare? Oh. That was a good run to not make it. So, Goon Squad goes from almost being down 36 to wait a second, we can take the lead here with a mark in the third frame. And you know what? That, you know what I always say? Sweet can get sour real fast. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff's giving me that look, except Jeff in the back of his mind knows, wait, Gordon's saying something positive, and he mm -hmm. knows something yep. right. And you know what? He went from sugar to something else real fast. Let's see what stir that he gives me over here if he throws a strike, oh, and he does But you know what? Count. I like that better than a four count. Oh, it's much better. Well, it was a much better shot, better than a four count, also better than the shot that he did on lane three. And how things have shifted from being up to being what? Up to downs to up. <laughs> Up, up, down, down. Left, right, start. Actually, there's a BA in there also. And, and, and anything else, if he doesn't carry, we're going to say it's BS. Yeah, pause. Uh -huh. Because there's a pause in that controller also. Exactly. All right, that spare does look good, though, and it is. All so, right. Jeff, Three frames in. Jeff Spare gives the Goon Squad in the lead. Now, Jeff gave Jeremy the symbol of, no, don't, go hang out. I'm going to continue. I'm not sure if that's a great idea, because, again, he left a big old mess on lane three the last time he was on there. So I'm going to have Jeremy come over here and let us know what he thinks of that shot that his dad's about to point out here. And I'm going to give him the mic. What is the, what's the question? I didn't hear you. Well, the question is describe what the heck he's doing right now. He wanted it. Hey, got him all down. There you all go. right, good move by Jeff. And you know what? I kind of actually like the strategy. You know, I say, I say set everything up. I say get, get the... <coughs> Put, put your son in the right position. You already know your son has a look before. Give me a chance, since they're giving us a chance to win, give me a chance to like get my feet wet, see what the waters are like. And I think he well, Jeff, he really did a good job with that shot. Absolutely, well Jeff had the opportunity because strike, uh, strike Force was working on an open. Now Force makes a quick tag, so he's in. That's tag number one. Yeah, yeah, um, he definitely, um, he, he's coming in there with a care package of strikes. He already saw that uh, we had a man down. Yeah, man, man now, now keep in mind two things. Number one, Force has had the luck. Yes, so I he think has. he has nothing but strikes. Number two, somewhere in there, Chris Downs has got to go in and throw at least two more shots. Mm -hmm. So let's see what happens here. There's strategy here, depending on whether or not he throws a double or not. Now, is he going to throw a double here? Or no, seven pin. I mean, he threw a double, seven he just didn't get knuckle, a double. Seven pin to knock go downs. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah, he threw the double, he just didn't get the double. Well, he, he threw good enough for a double. Yeah. I, Seven pins and eh, eh. They say you throw nine, you get nine. I think he yep. threw 10, but, but you know, he probably got a little tax on that one. Tax okay. being a seven pin. He did. Now again, South Jersey strike force because they left the seven pin goon squad. Could really has got some good strategic segments here. They don't need to throw a strike in order to keep the lead. Obviously you want to throw one to start taking some uh, pressure away from you and putting more pressure on strike force. There mm. is a spare over there from Forrest. Very good. And now I there's a first tag yeah. over from Jeff to son Jeremy, so mm. that's tag number one. Mm. You know, and I like, I, I like that Jeremy sticking his time right now, uh, settling in the moment, you're realizing that you. You're in the lead. Yeah, this is an important shot here. It's not a critical shot, yeah. but you'd really like this again. Get some distance between you and South Jersey Strike Force, especially when they are not completely mastering the lanes. He's saying, get there, sort of gets there. Mm -hmm. Two four. And if you know, sorry, two four eight. 
Mm -hmm. Two four eight. If you notice, uh, Jeremy um, switched to something a little kinder, and it's like kind of a vintage piece, good old fashioned Venom shock there. Yep. Looking to see if he gets a nice, relaxed, predictable look. He understands he doesn't need necessarily to chase a strike, and he wants to get a feel. When a team puts you in yeah. a position where you can feel it out, I say you always take that opportunity to do so. Yeah, some people want to be more aggressive on that, on that aspect, but I, I think that's, that Goon Squad's doing the right thing here. You know, they're playing around here, they're trying new stuff, and again, they can't, uh-oh, but they do need to make the spare. Oh, he does. Yeah, had a little bit of a footing issue there. He definitely, he got stuck, but, but, yeah, he, yeah, he's saying he can't slide right there. Th thankfully, he actually made the spear. But the one well, thing about footing issues, they'll get in your head quick. They will. Now, if he can't slide on lane four and he can't on lane three, maybe this is where you make the tag going back on lane four so you don't have to deal with lane four. Good point. And keep in mind again, because Jeremy does not have to finish the game, they can do whatever the heck they want because it's Jeff that's got to finish over. Actually, no, Jeff finishes on lane three. Yes. So again, not tagging, still on one. That ball looks okay to me, except now it's a little bit hot. E. Yeah. People yeah. are enjoying that. They're over here. Yeah, three, six, seven, ten. Yeah, so now for whatever reason, now we were here earlier for an earlier match. No mm -hmm. issue sliding in the first round. Yes. So the issue sliding over here. Yeah, it seems like there definitely is some issues right now. And even if he, he was sliding well before on that lane, the issue he had before in the other lane is now crept into his thoughts going into his, his next shot. And that could be detrimental. Yep. Well, Jeremy's going to be back over here trying to make the spare. And even though they didn't have any pressure before, they have some now if he does not make the spare. Uh, he might have it. You no, know, he will not. Ooh. Good try now. Goon Squad, 91 in the sixth. If South Jersey Storm marks here, then they take the lead. Chris Downs back in. There's tag number two. South Jersey Strike Force getting their tags in earlier this time around. Mm -hmm. First game, they won 7, 8, 9, 10. They've got two tags in even before the seventh frame. Downs right now looking to make some strikeage, and he does. Yes, indeed. Everything falls down on that one. Gets a much better look before he went a little wide, a little early. Got a little early flip. And that flip equal to four count before. South Jersey takes the lead. Forrest has already told Chris Downs to stay in there. He's looking for the double. I think Forrest is trying to see a little bit of a different line because keep in mind, he threw the shot, left the seven pin last time out on lane three. We've seen a couple if, things. We've seen three, six, seven, tens. We've seen three, four, six, seven, nine, tens. Double spike down here gives him a nice advantage. And no, there it goes. And there you go. Probably should have been a four or five up there. Hey, hey, it doesn't matter. All the pins went down. A double for South Jersey Strike Force. And all of a sudden, Goon Squad, who had a lead, is now looking at a major deficit if they don't figure out how to strike in quickly. Right there, striking like a former champ. A little, little uh, <coughs> BS carry there. Yeah, a little, little bit uh, shout out to Miguel El Tibetan Acobo. Yep, hopefully you're watching. And hopefully Jeffrey will be watching the strike. And he, he does. does. All right, that's tag number two. And again, there's tag. No, I'm going to put in. No, no, he's not. Going into the eighth frame, again, I'm not thrilled about this strategy because Jeremy was having footing issues. And I believe lane four, correct? He actually was. He was having. So if they tag again, guess where he's got to go? On lane four. And Chris is nodding his head up and down, going, yep, Gordon's right. Mm -hmm. Let's see how he attacks. Eighth Very frame good. here. That ball looks good to me, though. He wants a hook. He gets it. All the pins go down. Yeah. Big double for Goon Squad. Yeah, so he, did, he didn't go for the sharp angle there. He actually went a little more direct. He did not. Both teams have two tags that they need to make. South Jersey is making that first tag now. Forrest is coming on on the eighth. They have one more tag to make, and that is for Chris Downs. Now keep in mind this, once Chris Downs comes, comes in, he's got to bowl the rest of the way, but there's nothing saying that he doesn't have to come in until the last ball in the 10th frame. And Chris is nodding his head up and down at me again, saying, yep. Yep. Big shot here for Forrest, eighth frame. All right. Let's see if oh, a tree falls. Dribble. Does anyone hear it? And we all heard that 10 back right there. And Forrest, he's saying he wished somebody would. 
big shot right there. South Jersey can go out the door for, I believe, a 232. Goon Squad, 211. And what Goon Squad was hoping for was some sort of mistake from Forrest so they can come in and capitalize. The nine frame is going to be that last opportunity for them to have that. If they strike again, South Jersey will have a huge advantage going in the 10th frame. Well, let's see if he's got, well, we already know his, his, his ball is biting. Let's see if he's got bark. And let's see, I'm talking about rabbit dog bark, not tree bark. And Forrest wolf, wolf, right wolf. there, There's the there bark. you go. He got it. Four in a row for South Jersey Strike Force. They cannot be sh shut out going into the 10th frame. And more importantly, Goon Squad now must throw strikes or this game is over. And now here's the tag to Jeremy on the lane that he was having striking and that he was having sliding issues on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully that was a momentary issue. Uh, you don't want to rest in that. You got to find a way to get it out your head. You got to find the, a way to figure it out. And in the words of Scooby-Doo, what will wag you? There you go. Well, let's see if he has a clue of what to do right now. Ninth frame must be a strike. And it is. Big shot for Jeremy Gill over the ninth frame. Tenth frame coming up again. Same situation. A strike forces South Jersey strike force to show up, but it must be a strike. Anything less than that. And South Jersey does not need a mark to take out game two. Yeah, potential 2-11 finish. Yeah, if they go out the door, it's a 211, which means South yep. Jersey's got to get at least a mark on the board. Yeah. And another situation where they, yeah, and, they and can strike right. out I'm make listening a mark. To, I'm listening to Chris Downs here, and he's absolutely right. If, if Goon Squad goes out the door, South Jersey strike force first ball must be a strike. Mm -hmm. it must be. If he at least does the first one, South Jersey uh, strike force has got to show up with a mark. Anything yeah. less than that, SJS does not need a mark. Mm -hmm. Must strike situation right here in game two. So fourth and final tag has been made. So right now, it's Jeff. Now here's some interesting play, and we'll talk about that momentarily, but first things first. Got to have it, and he does. Yeah, he that means all. we've got to see him out from South Jersey strike force, depending on what the count is. Now the question becomes, does the mark have to be a strike? Mm. That is the question. That is the question to be answered. And let's see right now if he gives them a, a good something to think about right here. Question for Jeffrey. Is, it, is he ready to close the door? Tenth frame. Game two. Gets that ball out a little early. Looks but he good. knew what it he is. was doing. That is five in a row for Goon Squad. Mm -hmm. Missed the high five, but did not miss that shot. <laughs> Yes, and, and again, Jeff is in there for the long run because he started the game, he's got to end it. Unless Jeremy is dumb enough to tag in at this point, and it doesn't look like that he is. Oh, no, no, he is not a goon. And he may have goon on well, his shirt. Well, he is a goon. He's wearing a goon jersey. <laughs> that makes him a goon. He is a smart goon. That's right. Goons can be smart. Shout out to the goonies out there. Shout out to Don Jackson. Hey, you guys, thank you for watching. Hey, you guys. And a, he strikes it. Oh, he does. there you go. 211 out. So, what situation do we have here, Mr. Pepper? All right, so here's what the situation is. And I'm going to see if my math is, is good here 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19. Yep. 222 if, finish. I, well, if he goes out the door, it's a 232. Nine spare strike, I believe, is a 211, which would be a tie. Anything less, actually, no, it'd be a 210. They lose. First ball must be a strike. Nope. Gotta have it. He does, doesn't matter. Game's over. I know why you're thinking it was a 232, because you're seeing the bottom right hand corner with the pins that are already added in. Oh, However, he's got the 82 in the fifth frame. Nope. Oh, okay. So there's the 202. Now with the strike, wow. he can go for a 222. Except if he went nine spare, as a 210, they lose. Yeah. But doesn't matter. They win. They got the strike. Second shot here coming up. It's all over now with the shouting. And they put in Chris Downs, by the way, to start the game. Now, theoretically, they did not have to. They could have had Force go in. Throw the first two, then tag, but they felt comfortable enough, enough to put him in. And in this case, works out well. Uh, you, you call the 220 something, that's what they're going to get. I did that. 
my friend the clairvoyant. <laughs> so at the end of game two, South Jersey Strike Force 221, Goon Squad 211. Challengers are up two zip. Yes. And shout out to the 211 finish, the back six. Even though they were down, that right there is a quality finish. A finish that shows you that you can finish games and you can also start them off well. Let's and let's see if that shows to be true. And aha. It's it also a good line to see what did you learn from your teammate exactly. during the end of that. It looks like Jeremy learned a lot, starting out with a very strong strike. Yes, a quality finish leading to a quality start. And hopefully, uh, in terms of quantity, it'll lead to four straight games back-to-back -back for Goon Squad if they can stay on task. Well, they, they've got to win four out of their next five. And, ooh, that is the first unforced error we have seen from South Jersey Strike Force all match. Uh. They weren't clean until that point. They can still be clean, but if they're not, then, uh-oh. Error was unforced, and now maybe Goon Squad can change the conversation from being all the way down to being all the way up. Forrest right now starting, looking to make the spare, and he will not, he'll get the one. So no, South no Jersey, it's first time I've said that this match, South Jersey Strike Force is trailing. First time. First two games, they took a lead and they held on. Well, I wouldn't exactly say 279 is holding on, but. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Chris Down said. No problem, shoot a 279. Well, they'll, well. They do that, They're, they do have a good chance to win this game. Well, hopefully they'll keep holding on. As that ball simply read a little early. So all my 80s music enthusiasts, you'll get that reference. Well, when you get knocked down, let's see how quickly you can get back up. Let's oh, see yeah. what Forrest's response is. His response is no problem, I'm throwing a strike. Right. Well, if at first you don't succeed, pick yourself up and strike again. Yeah. And I, I can read lips since I know sign language. And what he said was uh, letters of the four word, words of the four letter variety, which I do not think we should be discussing over here in this oh, broadcast. Well, I'll say it. And he's care. cursing at himself. He said, foo. Frack. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> he did not say foo. But hey. what Jeremy said is strike. Goon squad, a quick double. They're now up by at least. I'd say close to 20, 21 pins going third frame. Mm -hmm. And one thing I like to say about um, the tandem of J and J, let's call them that, the Gellers. J, J and J striking machine? Yes, yes, indeed. They're gonna make you sweat? Great, yes. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> but. I, the, the sadder thing is I can come up with that stuff quicker than, than Shondike can, and, and that's pretty sad because he's really good. Well, the one thing that's gonna kinda come up quick is that shot. And. Uh. He got out a little early. So I want to speak to the contrasting styles of Jeffrey and Jeremy. It. Yes. Jeremy likes to um, not necessarily swing the lane, but likes to play a little what he's I He's a call. swinger. You can, oh, yeah. He's a swinger. Jeff is more down and in. Shout out to the bowlers out there who are also swingers. See it on holy. Um, anyway, but <laughs> wet to dry, likes to play from the inside. Yeah, definitely more down and in. One provides the oil, the other one uses the oil that is sent to them. And if you look at it this way, early on, the lanes would favor Jeff, and then once they start breaking down, the lanes would favor Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Which again, really nice way to play, assuming that he makes a spare, which he won't. Oh. Driver. Oops. Don't mm -hmm. stop the time. So I was about to say Goon Squad will hold on to the lead, but uh, maybe not. Funny, funny thing happened on the way to the spare bank. Mm. Well, again, uh. one of those sweet sour situations. Four strike over here, South Jersey strike force w could potentially retake the lead with two strikes. First one will be coming from Forrest if they get it. And he does. Now, do they switch or do they stay with Forrest? And Chris Downs right now is not moving from his spot, so it looks like they're staying with Andrew Forrest. Mm -hmm. Going with the um, hot hand on the one player that is on the side that no other bowler is using. That is true. The, the lone we wefty, which exactly. is a, no a righty bowler on the left side. A wefty. We got a wefty. Or a lighty. Or a lighty. He's not going light. He is definitely um, hitting those pockets strong He's and with purpose. He's definitely not hitting it light, so I'm calling him a wefty. <laughs> wefty looking for three in a row here. Oh, that ball's got to hurry. As soon as I say he's not hitting it light. Five pin. 
And we got a situation. Oh, I'm not putting my friggin' hands down. You left a five pin, buddy. I, I happen to have powder I got, on. I got me. powder in the bag, too, Haas. And I got a leather on. And, and don't forget, only a couple <laughs> hundred thousand people are watching this right now. No pressure. He's not going to miss a five pin. You missed it. Oh, no, he didn't miss it. <laughs> he's not paying for drinks. Yeah, he he's not he's paying for the powder. Fraternity. He's saying other things. He's paying. Okay, if we go, you're paying for gambling? Okay. All right, $10. That's cool. I we'll just want that. a beverage. And speaking of which, that shot was ice cold, but not in a good way, leaving yeah, you me two, four, five. Lighty. That one was lighty. That was very light. That it was, was light with no fight. All right, Jer Jeremy is chatting over with Jeff. Andrew Forrest, because we're talking about casinos and going there later, has now said that he'll that he'll bankroll a uh, ten dollar uh, roulette bet for me, which is great. Appreciate that. Uh, obviously, if they don't win this match, he's probably not going to go to a casino. Probably he's probably going to go to a bar. Yeah. Or to watch for a rumble. He did mention that. Yes, I did. Yes. And let's see if, uh -oh. oh. Well, Jeremy found where the oil was over in lane four. Mm. Well, and he it, found the skid on lane three. He found the oil on lane four. And right now, they're fighting themselves in a 13-pin deficit. And the one thing I... They, they went from up 20 to down 20. Yes. Actually, no, down 13. And they did make the tag. Jeff is now in in the fifth frame. Mm -hmm. um, There's tag number one for them. South Jersey has not tagged yet. Mm. I want to send a so shout they out. still need four. I want to send a quick shout out to Andre Welbon to something he mentioned about pace. Young Jeremy needs to control his pace. Yes. Um, a lot of times Jeremy's we don't realize to throw that ball faster yeah. than what he is. Uh, explain what he means by that. Oh, I would love to. So. One thing we don't have happen to um, realize is that when we have the advantage, that adrenaline picks up. And we don't realize that our feet are picking up speed, and then we start playing catch up in terms mechanically of our hands and our feet, keeping that speed in one rhythm, one accord, if you will. Yes, Jeff will make the spare. So that stops the bleeding for the goon squad. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's that the Goon Squad can sort of hold their head up on is that South Jersey Strike Force, unlike the first two games, haven't gone strike, strike, strike out of the building and haven't blown them out. Mm. That being said, Force is still in there. Chris is still hanging out with me. Hi, Chris. Having fun? You want anything to drink? What's that? Want anything to drink? Uh, I'm good, thanks. Okay, you've, you've been hanging out here for a little bit. That's why I'm asking. Throw it porch a little bit? Uh, no, no, I just took a sip of my, uh, my wife's soda, so we're good. Okay, yeah, all right. Sounds good to me. Now, for, I have a feeling you may be getting tagged in sooner rather than later. There's a 4-7 up there. Uh, I trust them. I trusted them to make it the 7-pin earlier. I trust them to make this. Okay. We, we will see whether or not that trust is well-founded. Shout out to trust. Yeah, it is on the left-hand side. However, as you've said, Andrew is a wefty, a.k.a. he throws the ball with the right hand. And he looks like he is going to make it, and he does. Yeah, definitely all over that. Great job by the Wefty himself, Mr. Yes. Forrest. So right now, South Jersey Strike Force up by 13 as we go to the second half of game three. Uh, South Jersey Strike Force already up to zip. So they would love to be up three zip. Obviously, being down 2-1 is a little bit better than 3-0, so Goon Squad really wants to get on the board. Yeah, you definitely want to get on the board. You don't want to... You don't want to look at a donut too long. No, you do not. Yeah, you because know, looking at a donut certainly isn't a treat. You never want that sweep. You never want the potential for the sweep to be there. Because what does a donut have? A hole. I was gonna oh, say, look, it's another five pin. No, I was going to say, you would have forced that split by even mentioning a hole. And Gordon... <laughs> then I'll only put up one finger so that only one dollar comes out. <laughs> Don't get a full hand, only a little finger. And it's a nice finger, it's not the naughty finger. But he'll, oh boy. Oh, now he'll make it. Making that happen a little bit <laughs> suspenseful. He was Mr. worried. Forrest. Chris, I don't think was worried. I did, what? Are you terrified? I, I did, that's why I said, oh boy. Right now. All right, so they still haven't tagged over on the South Jersey Strike Force yet. 
Goon Squad right now. Uh oh. Hmm. All right, we, there seems to be an issue over in the lanes. So we have Jeff. What? Oh, I get putting his shoes off. Take him on. We, we've got mysterious substance over on the approach on lane four. So meanwhile, while we're taking a little approach break, which mm -hmm. obviously is the right thing to do if you're having some issues. Yes. So they're going in, they're looking back. Hey, Jeff, you want me to call somebody in and do something about the approaches, or are you guys okay? Okay. If you change your mind, let me know. I can bring somebody in. So we are chatting about possible uh, approach yes. changes over there. Mm -hmm. So it is possible that somebody brought something with them over in lanes three and four that they uh, probably wish that they didn't. Yeah, yeah that definitely right up, there yeah. can be disheartening. You know, you have a good look, you're feeling good. All of a sudden, the approaches, something changes with your foot. Maybe you're stepping something, something was stepped on, brought over. It can well, totally screw your head up a little it, bit. Well, it, you can also, since it's a foot issue, you can also lose your soul, so to speak. Very good. And you know what? And then yeah. you start doing soul searching. That's right. Then you're towing the line. Uh, mm, there you go. Yes, yeah, well, so we're arch rivals of each other. I can tell in terms of the punmanship play. Indeed, there could be a lot of uh, a lot of lot of evil afoot. Yeah. Yes. A lot of foot foolery. Yes. And, and trying to avoid defeat. That would be very foul if we did that. Too much of that going over the line. Oh, now you're such a heel. I am. Uh, by the way, for everybody that's listening in, that's cursing us out right now, we are sorry. We're really sorry. Jeff is probably not sorry that he made the change. It's a big strike over there. Very good. Now, as, as much as they've been playing catch up, a double here by Jeff. And as you can see, Jeff is not taking out Jeremy. Jeremy's hanging out right over there. A double over here, and all of a sudden, that deficit that was 13 at one point will now be zero. Mm -hmm. Yes, this has been a, a very uh, they can go tip out. of war like game. Well, if both bullers go out right now, it's 235, 235 tie. So theoretically, right now, we're at the point where if he strikes, we're tied. Here's and a I shot. I think he's going to do that. Good. Yeah, I do too, and he does. We're tied. Yeah, definitely like uh, Jeffrey's attack there. Uh, very, very um, classic, classic yes. attack. You know, no frills, just going for the pocket, throwing it, making him fall. And because South Jersey is on a spare, if he does not throw a strike here, Goon Squad will take the lead. Big shot here. Now we see Chris Downs. So that's tag number one for them. We're going to see the 7, 8, 9, 10 strategy, I believe. That ball looks good. Needs to be a strike, it is. Yeah, so right now still he... tied going into the eighth frame. Yeah, still tied. You're right. Still tied um, mentally, physically, right now. He looks very relaxed. He looks calm. And of course, why not? You're in the driver's seat. You're up 2 0. Yeah, they can afford to lose this game. Yeah. If they take this one, it's a near strike hole on this match. Yeah. So this game could then could be a really important game, definitely from a momentum standpoint. And momentum is Downs key. is still in. They've only made one tag. Only one so far. Three more to go. Three more to go. And does not make the double eight pin. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit why that ball labored as opposed to the other shot? Well, that, that's a bad non-strike for a number of reasons. Number one, from a strategy standpoint, they need to get an, a number of strikes just to be able to tag. But number two, more importantly, they now fall 20 pins behind Goon Squad. Because Goon Squad's already on a double. Chris will make the spare. He does. And luckily, the 10 pin did not join the 8 yeah. pin on that one. That one was all in the oil. It swam now, in the now deep Jeff water. Jeff is still in there. They also have not made a tag, which, which again leaves their strategy. In order for this mathematically to happen, for them to not put themselves in a must strike situation, this is going to be Jeff's last frame, and then Jeremy's going to have to come in on the ninth. Yes. And if it's going to be your last, make it, make it, make count. it worth it. Make it worth it. Three in a row for Goon Squad. Jeremy's going to come in, ninth frame. That's right. That's tag number two. Yes, he definitely went dumb on that one. He, he went all the way in. He went for the gusto. He threw that one. He threw that one like he like he meant it. Like he had something to say, and he said it with volume. Jeremy up now. Hopefully he settled down before he was extremely frustrated. 
You know, he got which, he, which I'm pretty sure why he took a siesta for a little bit. Now all of a sudden they have the lead. This is a big strike right here for Jeremy coming up. Mm -hmm. A strike does wonders. A non-strike could be disastrous depending on what it is. Oh. Uh, it's a bucket. It's not disastrous. It is a makeable spare. However, mm. and a big however, if he misses this, he puts their feet in game three right back into South Jersey strike mm. forces hands. Yeah. Uh, speaking strategic wise especially where he's based on where he's playing he is really really um actually i'm looking at the numbers now i take that back mm. they just did put the game in south jersey strike forces hands mm -hmm. because if they go out the door now it's a 211 strauss jersey strike force can go out for 215. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. that was a not only was it not a strike that was a bad pin count well it definitely was bad count and I mean, now they're they're making tag number three right here yeah and I understand why he moved a little more inside. He wanted to make sure he didn't leave any kind of washout. Yep. Unfortunately, the ball did not finish and never even really started up. And the result was six count. Yep. Now here's tag number two for there. And they almost had to do that or else they had to go strike, strike, strike over the 10th frame. Mm -hmm. Tag number two here to Forrest. Ninth frame coming up. That ball looks good. It is. And it finishes. Sure did. Now, tag number three will be over here. That's to Downs. You can throw in the 10th. As we have said before, the only thing Forrest has to do is to throw the last mark of the, or the last ball of the game. So, right now, South Jersey Strike Force up. Up by four. And he hit that same Ooh, spot that now, Jeremy and hit he before. Did. Now a number of things, and it's a non-strike. Now Andrew's got to throw the spare, because if Second they don't and he misses, the game's over. Second Goon Squad wins. High drama here in game so three. So he's got to play this, and now that non-strike means Goon Squad can now win the game. And this is very makeable and missable. It's and choppable, too. Yes, it is. And however, he makes it. Mm -hmm. So what that means is this. If he gets a seven, that forces Goon Squad to throw two. Mm -hmm. Jeff gets a hangout over here. As a reminder, who started for Goon Squad this game? Jeremy. So Jeremy's got to throw the last ball. Which means he's got to get out of his the head. the first ball here because Jeff came in in the middle of frame nine. So Jeff must throw the first ball. After that, then they can figure out how they want to play it. Indeed. But Jeff's got to throw the first ball. Understood. And let's see if Forrest understands the assignment. All right. So I take. I said something wrong. I will take it back. South Jersey finishes with a 195. Goon Squad does not need to double. They only need a mark. Yes, they Jeff do. must throw the first ball now. For if Jeff throws a strike, no problem, they win. If Jeff doesn't, Jeremy must pick up the spare, whatever the heck that spare is. If there is an open here, they obviously, they automatically lose. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a strike. No, it, it will not. not. Actually, no, I take that back. They do not have to tag here. Jeremy just has to throw the last ball. So now strategy, strategy comes into play. Who throws the spare? Jeremy only has to throw the last ball. Now, if they open, they lose regardless. So tagging does not matter. In the this case, now Jeremy wants to throw the last ball, the front, which means Jeremy's got to throw the fifth. So I take that back. Strategy comes into play now. Which one feels more comfortable about making the seventh pin? Uh, Jeff says he does. He's taking the shot. And I definitely agree with that. Um, take the pressure off of your son right there and allow him to find himself in the last shot and to settle himself in. And it looks like he'll make it. He does. All over. Now Jeremy's got it for the last shot. Yes. Second number 62 to the front bed. Now Jeremy must throw the last ball. And so he, six. And keep it on the lane, of course. Well, he, he, well he's got more than keep it on the lane. He needs six. If we get another golfing score of four, they're going to lose this. Mm. So he's got to throw six. Well, he really six needs they six win, swing at this five one. as they tie. Anything less than that, and in, in South Jersey, we'll go three up, three zip. Uh, that looks like six. It is. Yep, six plus four right Jeremy there. Jeremy comes up to the clutch. He does what he needs to do. Goon Squad will win. Two hundred one ninety-five. Goon Squad gets on the board. Very good. I'm going to try to get a quick word with Jeremy when he comes to the side. Yep. Just ask him a little bit. How, a little how bit of strategy feeling. here. Hey there, Jeremy. Great finish. 
Sean, I faced him by the way, voice of choice. And I saw you had a little bit of a footing issue before on the approach. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, when we came in, I noticed that they were sticky. I was mostly fine. But then for whatever reason, I stopped dead on four and then slid through it on three in a really bad spot early in the game. But we came back and got it. And I noticed that you're catching skid spots. How do you feel about those spots that you're catching? Um, do you see anything else out there that will give you potential for a better result in the, in the, moving, in the games moving forward? I got to get right of the over under. There's over under right on my break point. So if I get in a little bit, it goes 60 feet. I get it right, it looks fine. So I just got to get right of it and trust it. In other words, welcome to Bowler City. Correct. All right, thank you. There you have it. Plenty of oil to play with in the middle if you choose to play with it. And as you saw, <laughs> Chris Downs did play with that oil. Result was 258. Yeah, and, and Jeff made the. If they wind up winning this, Jeff made the move of the match, which is calming Jeremy down and shooting the spare. Yes, yes. Every pin matters. We definitely saw that in the last game. It was a constant seesaw of who was going to see something and get what they want. And, and he saw correctly. He saw correctly. And as, as everybody else can see, and hopefully everyone else just saw, they got game three and they are in it. It is 2-1. And the score didn't teeter-totter. <laughs> Jeff, right now, going for a straight map ball looks good. It is Jeremy with the pip fist pump of approval. There yeah, you I go. saw that. That's how you do that. <laughs> fist pump of approval. Absolutely. I just get to commentate. <laughs> Nothing illegal. I just get to commentate on it. I thought that was cool. Jeremy's like, what's wrong with that? Nothing. It's fun. We like fun. Here. Which means me making bowling is always fun. Commenta commentary on bowling is always fun. All right, so we are in game four for everybody that's joining us. This is Gordon Pepper. I'm here with PS1, Sean Dyke face on. That's right. And, and we're here with the 10 pin. We got one. One remains, and that is the 10 pin. Yes. Now, one is also the number of games that Goon Squad has currently won. South Jersey Strike Force has won two. They're up to one. And one is the loneliest number. It is right now. They, Goon Squad wants to get off the one because four wins. If they stay on one, they lose. Jeff makes the 10 pin. Mm -hmm. And we got a strike spare. All over that. Now, again. Jeff's got it through the first three. Chris Downs has got it through the first three. Then after that, we'll see whether or not they want to tag or keep same strategy. Yeah, we've seen a lot of a uh, lot of strategies. We've seen strategies, much like life situations change as this match has gone along. Downs right now, second frame coming up. That looks good. And we're tied 20 piece. Yes, yeah, right. 20, 20. South Jersey Strike Force with a slight advantage. They have a strike over a spare. So double right here gives them the lead, and then they can figure it out whether or not to switch over to uh, Mr. Forrest. Andrew Forrest, for the most part, has had the hot hand in this match. Agreed. With the exception of the end of the last game, and the non-strike comes back to bite him a little bit. It allows Goon Squad to hold on. Yeah, not only contrasting sides for Forrest and Downs, but contrasting uh, styles as well. You know, you Contracting see. approaches, absolutely. Yeah. Looking to double here, take the lead. Ooh, no. And three right there is um, a little bipolar. <coughs> no, I got four over there. We got a bucket. No, I mean, well, lane three. Lane three uh, right lane, now. Uh -huh. yes. lane, yeah, lane three is being like, eh. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you guys should strike right now. Spares are good. It's looking like restaurants are part of the same chain, but just the food just seems a little different when you go across the street. Or in the words of Filler on the Roof that I mentioned on the last match, mm -hmm. transition. Yeah, transition. True. Well, hopefully uh, we can get ahead of the transition. <laughs> well, let's see if he makes a spare first. And he will oh. not. And there's that five pin that Mr. Forrest has had no problems of knocking down. And Mr. Downs, unfortunately, has not. Mm. So another open for South Jersey. Another chance like the last game for Goon Squad to take an early lead. Last yes. game when they took the lead, they lost it a little bit, but they held on to take it back and win. Yeah, there is a light that shines special for the goons. And let's see if the goons get on it soon. And they indeed do. And strike, spare, strike. Now, Three clean. do they tag in Jeremy? Honestly, here's the I interesting say no, thing. Yet. Well, the, the answer is no, says Forrest. Jeremy's even giving me the waving over the next side of nope, 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 nope. <laughs> they're going to have to say the nay no. <laughs> All right, they're not tagging in. Jeff's going in. He's looking to double on lane four. If he does extend their lean out, as high, it's good. That pushes it real good. That high, it was high enough to flush. 
Goon and squad right now looking at a 30 plus lead over South Jersey Strike Force. Mm -hmm. They're keeping Chris Downs in there and Chris Downs needs to start in some strikes. <laughs> so it's sort of like the golfing in the caddy or the person that throws that, that swings. I have a better look right now. I'm okay with that, but he always does the driving. It's like driving Mr. Daisy. So basically, you're you're putting, and he's just driving you from place to place. Exactly, exactly, oh. exactly right. Oh, Drive wait a minute. Show putt for Dell. Wait, pregnancy test says it's good. Yep. Well, we don't know the pregnant. Well, we don't know yet. But right now, we we have a baby split. Well, yeah, yeah, it could it could be a baby. <laughs> it all depends if they're gonna do. Let's see what Moy what Povich says. Say. Yeah. Let's see what Moy Povich says. All right, we're making this. Or are we going to see pull-out game display? Let's when see. When it comes to lane four, Chris Downs, you are the father. You, you made a baby. There you go. In the case of game four, <laughs> who Downs. will be the winner? Well, right right now, uh, Downs made the spare, which, which is all good. That's the good news. Bad news is... Uh, conversion of splits is not going to do you much good when Goon Squad's got a double on the board. And looking at more. From what we right saw now. in the last game, um, it definitely helps to fill these frames up because anything can happen from frame to frame. We saw in one or two shots someone be up 30 to be down 20. Absolutely. We see a Downs surface right change. Now. Surface change, ball change, same reaction, 3 6 10. Mm. And, and I like that. I like the fact that, that he changed surface, he changed surfaces on this lane where he's been getting the extremely light hits. So now that you have the surface change, now you gotta decide if you're gonna move your feet and where you're gonna move to. But you gotta figure it out. You gotta figure it out. Fio. Downs right now, looking to make another spare, he does. South Jersey Strike Force trying to keep them in the game with spares. Here is our first tag of anybody. Jeremy is coming in in the fifth frame. Again, just a reminder, you got to have four tags. This is tag number one. Mm -hmm. Jeremy is in, and to be quite honest, this is a good tag for a number of reasons. That would be one major one, three in a row over for the Goon Squad. Reason number two is if you're going to make somebody feel comfortable, this would be the way to do it when you already have 20, 30 pins and possibly make that more. It's a nice way to set them up for game five. Obviously, there will be a game five. The question becomes, will somebody up three to one? As of right now, it looks like the answer will be no. If Goon Squad wins this, they'll be tied two games apiece, mm -hmm. and it becomes a best of three. You know, and, and you know me, I love game seven. I was just going to say. I love, I want me some game sevens. You know, hey, put some pe Pepper wants seven. Pepper wants seven. Gator and wants Jeremy four. wants they, 10. Jeremy wants 10. More importantly, Goon Squad wants fours and four in a row, and they get it. Goon Squad increasing their lead. Now almost 60 pins going into the sixth frame of South Jersey. Now, if you're a South Jersey Strike Force fan here, the only good thing is that they won the first two games. Indeed. So it's not, it looks a lot better. Than, it is a lot better than what it looks like here in the eighth pin still up. We have attack coming in their first attack. Here comes Forrest. Forrest chatting some words that, again, we're probably not going to be wanting to hear on this podcast. Well, so he says he's not a quiet storm. <laughs> he, he is. Well, I, none of them are, which is what makes this fun. We should mic up the Fullers. No, we shouldn't. All right, Forrest looks like we'll make the eight pin and he will. If you mic up the Fullers, they'll be, if you mic up the Bowlers, first of all, they'll be cursing out the pins, and then they'll be cursing out you and me. That we should have a late night broadcast. Yes. Then. You be a bowling after midnight. That's right. <coughs> By the way, we've had that before. Once upon a time, we've had midnight title matches. We have that frequently in the southeast. We have had it a couple of times in the northeast. That could be fun to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask our, our cameraman, Anthony Nieves, and he can nod or, or shake his head. Would you like to do some midnight matches? Over No, he says. That, that's a quick no. <laughs> he went, eh, that means no. Forrest right now, seventh frame, still going to him, looking for something, and he gets it. Yeah. Strike on the board for South Jersey. Hopefully now they was looking for. Well, first of all, they, they need a lot of help to get back into this. If they go out the door, they do shoot a 224. Yes. All right, so they're tagging back in. Jeff is going in second frame. That's tag number two for them. 
Goon Squad again. They must tack four times. Mm -hmm. Shot here, looking for five in a row. Ooh. That's buried. Look like they're searching no for a stretch. And they're not doing anything right now. They're not searching for anything right now. They're, they're searching for game four, which they should hit. Potential stretch going on. Yep. It all depends on what's happening. Stretchy right now is defined as winning by over 100 pins. That certainly could possibly happen here, going to the eighth frame. Still not tagging. I probably would have tagged here at this point, but it really doesn't matter. You can tag in the ninth frame. They have this game under control. Now that I have said that, it's still a makeable spare, 3 6 10. Yeah, happy, happy, joy, joy sometimes can make you go a little fast, fast. Yep, exactly. Shout out to Andre Wilbon. Hopefully, you're listening to this. Mm -hmm. Wilbon, piece of advice coming in, which is too fast. Your, your feet get there before the hands do, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And they both get there before your brain does. You're right. Jeff looking to make the spare. Uh -oh. oh, looking. He got well, there's a little piece of help that South Jersey strike was looking for. Got two and a possible there, and now, um, it well, definitely didn't fall there. If Goon Squad goes mark mark, they do finish in the 220 area. However, if South Jersey Storm throws some strikes here, they can throw it up to 224, which means they are going to put some pressure on Goon Squad. And Tag back to Chris Downs as we go into the eighth frame. That's two for them. And how fast the wind can just suddenly blow. Well, first things first, they need strikes here, and they don't and need that. 3 6 10. Man downs, pin downs. We have Sh issues. Shows you how amazing bowling math can be. You, you've, you've been talking, shall we say, junk, which is another four letter word that I will place instead of the four letter word that he said. Yeah, that's some real. Stuff you just said right there. Junk. Yeah. And that could be some more junk if that ball doesn't hook up. He does. Yeah, you know. However, however that known strike here in the eighth frame means that it's all over from but the shouting. If they go out the door, it is a 204. Actually, if they go out the door, it's a 204. Goon Squad will need a mark somewhere in there. You know, bowling math is, 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 bowling a, is okay. a beautiful it's a beautiful thing. But this <laughs> must be a strike here from uh, Andrew Forrest, and it is. So Goon Squad needs one mark from either the ninth or the 10th frame. One of them will get a mark, right? Andrew Forrest, by the way, throws in the ninth frame. Now that tag is tag number three. Both bowlers need one tag left, which will almost certainly happen in the 10th frame. Yes, he will throw a mark. Yes, he will. No, maybe he won't, 3 6 10. Your prognostication is usually good. Jeremy's hoping that it's good for one more time because a mark also means spare. Like I said, we've seen stranger things happen we, in this yes, building. Yes, we have. In tag team title yes, matches. Yes, we have. <coughs> Again, Geller just needs a mark, and then Jeff needs a count. Jeff does not seem worried. If Jeremy opens, Jeff may be a little bit more worried. Not worried. Locked up. This is the game is locked up. We're going to be a uh, best of three coming out. A any mark and your judgment will be correct. They only need two. They can get best 204. That is correct. So that does mean you need a mark. Here. Yep, we're good. Yep, you're good. Well, as Told long you. as wait, wait. That ball needs to make sure two things. Number one, that ball needs to make sure it doesn't get fed to the gutter monster, and that would be number two. Yes. We got the transition. We got it. Transition. Transition. So basically, Jeremy needs a couple of pins. Because right now they're at 195. Technically, he needs six pins. Six pins is all we need. Six pins is all he needs. Actually, less than that. Five pins is all he needs. Because five pins gives him a 205. So Greek Church is a winner. If he decides to play golf, or, or that becomes interesting. No, that looks good. That's enough. Certainly That's a, enough. as long as they make the tag. And as Jeff has already said, he's planning on it. And there it is. Mm -hmm. So that is the fourth and final tag. They're good to go. <laughs> but mathematically, it went from all but not to hold yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, hold up. Wait a minute. No, <laughs> they, they figured it out. They, uh, 
They got the train back on the tracks. No need to do that. But it doesn't matter. They'll finish with the 211, and that will be good enough. Yeah. Best yep. outsiders you can do is a 204. Goon Squad's got the 211. Goon Squad tagged correctly. And we're tied two to two. Yes. Uh, the finish wasn't much, but it was certainly enough. It was enough. And enough is always enough. It's funny. They gave South Jersey, Stor uh, South Jersey Strike Force a chance to get oh, right yeah, back yeah, into yeah. this. Yeah, they definitely um, let, the, uh, let the window open so they could smell whatever was cooking. And what's cooking right now is a 610. Yeah. Steaming. Steaming pile of what? Steaming pile of 610. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and Andrew is still talking yap over to his teammate. He's talking a steaming pile of 610 over to his teammate. <laughs> will Downs make the spare? Not that it matters. Yes, he will. Of course, will finish the rest of that? Still doesn't matter, <laughs> but he does make the spare. <laughs> Andrew goes, no, not like this. I mean, it really didn't matter. He didn't get the strike. It doesn't matter at all. And this shot won't matter at all. Anyway, so if I'm Chris, I try to throw an area. I try to throw something different. Maybe that's what he should be doing next game, but it doesn't matter this game. At the end of game four, Goon Squad 211, South Jersey Strike Force 184. We are tied two games apiece. Uh, if I could just point out to um, some brilliant components of his surface search. I feel he has a great look with his current surface right now on lane four. Those surfaces that were acting kind of erratic on lane three, he can move deeper in and actually manipulate whatever oil with those stronger surfaces that he has there if he chooses to be daring enough to switch the surfaces in between shots. Well, we shall see. Fortune mm -hmm. does favor the Bulls. Mm -hmm. And, yes. and right now, best of three. So we are guaranteed to get a game five and a game six. Yep. Almost a game seven. Ah, you know, fortune does favor the bold. You know I like me some game hey, seven. If you're going to be bold, you might as well go ahead and be bold so, you, so the situation can be seven. beautiful. That's what I want. And he was bold, but that shot was not beautiful. <laughs> oh, no. It was very soap soapy. Mm -hmm. well, he's young, and uh, at times he seems like he could be restless. And these are the days of Sean Dice lives. Oh, you know what? Well, and whoever loses this match may be taken to a general hospital, maybe the psychiatric ward. Well, you know what? Well, I see you there. And let's see if we can see this spare right here. You know, I Jer mean, when when Jeff is looking at Jeremy, he's thinking about all my children or all his children. <laughs> and he's thinking about all these going down. And he will not mimic what his dad did before, and he will not yeah, he will leave not the open. three pin there. He will make one spare to live. The one thing that has remained consistent is the over-under situation that both, um, well, all three um, right-handed bowlers are experiencing on lane three. Uh, yeah, nobody's figured really, the only person that's really sort of figured out lane three is Jeff, and I'm not sure I can really say that after the open that he had. However, most of them figured out lane four, and that includes mm -hmm. Andrew. Yeah. Mr. Forrest is starting game four. I'm sorry, he's starting game five on lane four. Yeah, both and again, Jeremy and Chris are playing similar areas on lane three. That's why they're both um, experiencing the same struggles. So the X factors are Forrest as well as Jeffrey. The question now becomes, who's going to figure out lane three consistently first? And if a bullet does, how well can they relay that information over to their teammate? Indeed, indeed. We have another staring contest. Let's look to see who does the first blink. Right now, lane three blinks first. Uh -huh. Double for Andrew Forrest, South Jersey Strike Force once again will take a quick lead. Yeah, Seems that right now, whoever takes a quick lead here usually shall win this. Yeah, it looks like lane three is a different kind of girl, likes it from the left. Because the right is not get, getting it tonight. Well, we'll see. Again, Jeff has layered out game three, except again, he can't look at that frame until the fifth frame. Going exotic. And, and again, two different looks on each lane. And, and, I, and I know what I see from back here, but it's always different when you're back what, here. What do you see? Give me your, give me your crystal ball, ball prognostication. What do you see? Well, similar to match that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. Lane four, you're closer to the ball return. You're going to end up, I feel, you should be squared up more, playing more mid lane or more down and in. You got more room to move left on lane three. And that's where you definitely need to really 
hit the ball in the oil, meaning get at the bottom of it, get as much rotation you, as you want from mid lane and manipulate all that oil. Not a lot of room to move left on lane four, get, get a, a trustable surface, and just attack, as Gordon would say, down and in. Down and in, down and in, down and in. Down and in is not the same situation but, on lane three. By the way, just pointing that out, that's what Andrew has been throwing for most of this match, albeit on the lefty side. Mm -hmm. But down and in on the lefty side, even though he's a righty, therefore he's a lefty. Mm -hmm. For those that have just tuned in, and let's sing, there's down and in. Oh, no, hey, right there. He was able to do a little more left with that exotic gem on hey, lane three. I don't know if they're listening to me, but boy, I sound good right now, don't I? <laughs> you sound like boy, you know a thing or two about a thing or two. About. Yes. Look at you. Look at me. And you bowl too, bro? Look at you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to all that. Or, or um, in, the, in the words of Brandon Brewer, wait, Gordon Bowles? No, nah, that's <laughs> RIP yeah, Pat Stay on that one. All my battle rap watches. And let's down see if he stays in. in it. Down and in. Uh, right there, down and in, certainly looking like uh, a, a, winning, a winning look for Three. the Wefty. Yes, for the Wefty now, South Jersey Strike Force, as they are done with the third frame, can tag in. Chris Downs is not moving. He's not even looking at me. He's chatting with his friends. Yeah. Yeah, Chris has just said, see me, talk to me in the seventh frame. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. And Andrew Forrest has had a really nice look on lane three in the second frame. If that continues in the fourth frame, you're right. We're not going to see Chris Downs anytime in the near future. There's Forrest. That ball looks a little high, but it's got to move a little bit. Oh, no. Yeah, he missed his target inside on he that did, one. He did. He did. No, that ball squirted out. Six, seven, ten, and all of a sudden, you may see Chris earlier than advertised. No, Chris is still hanging out there. Not a good shot from Forrest. Yeah, uh, Forrest definitely has his um his own personal struggle where he can no one can get in his own way except him. He's the only person on his side, so all he has to basically do oh, is one. play his oh, shot. Oh, he's looking to make the spare. Oh, he was going for the ricochet. He was going for the ricochet. Didn't happen. So 85 in the fourth for South Jersey, and if my math is correct, Goon Squad does two two doubles. They can have a 99 in the fourth, which means man, why they be up? Mm. It would also be the first time a team. Mm took the lead back after giving it away at the beginning and no. double double two eight oh, and we have that that down and in lane but you have to play the down and in lane yeah he didn't down play and it in. down and in he, he played it out spiraling outwards yeah that Up, was not down and in that was upside down inside out that was yeah upside down the more diane ross turns you inside out goes round and round except he's not going to want to hear the next set of that lyrics because that would not be good for his bowling. Ooh. Oh, Nate's a spare. So well, he does not get to hear the second half of those lyrics from Diana Ross. I think, I think he needs to have some reflection on that potential and almost deflection that we just saw right there That's on right. that 2-8 double wood. Spare reflection conversion. on the near deflection. Near the He's chatting with Jeff. Jeff has told Jeremy stay in. Yes. So that's what they're doing. I'm not sure if that was a good idea. Let's talk to Jeff about that. What is the rationale in terms of not tagging at this point? He was uh, flush on three last time out, and I know that I have to go on four. So we're trying to keep him on three as much as we can, and we know we have to tag in a couple of times. Sounds good. Confidence a little bit in the kid. He didn't get there that time, but he. He was, he's, he's in good shape. He's all right. He'll make the spare. He didn't know, but he, he, yeah, he's got to make a little spare. He'll make the spare, and I'll go up on four and lock it up. And I noticed you Sounds mentioned. Good to me. I'm sorry, sir. And I noticed you mentioned um, stay in. That, that down could be and two in. things. Down that could and mean in. Stay in down the game. And in. Stay on and stay in the shot. We noticed that he's he's searching for the confidence, and he's trying to get some bravado. We're going to give him game seven. So we have to make sure we're ready for game seven. He's got to be there just in case we get that far. Game seven is his stage. He'll be ready. So wait, you don't want to finish this in game five or in game six? I prefer to finish in game six, but I'm not convinced. Okay, not fair sure enough. We get there. We get. We have to plan ahead. Uh -huh. Thinking about game seven in case we get there. Well, those are my two favorite words. It's game seven. I can say that now yes. freely because we're in the middle of game five. I just want to see a game seven. Game seven the last couple of times out, and uh, the, the kid always rises to the occasion. Santa. Oh, oh my, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. Ten pin on lane four. And I will. I'll, I'll go. Yeah, you, you chat. I'll be right back. And, and that right there, when I say anything can happen, anything can happen. 
He hit the 10 one time, two times, three times. It stayed up. That pin swallowed two Viagra pills. It stayed strong. Speaking of staying strong, mentally, you got to stay strong if you want to stay in this battle. Right now, we are tied at 2-2. So essentially, we're at 0-0, but with less room to blink and, and less room to overthink. For those of you who are taking this time to well, spend a little time with us, you can be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us here. Tag team title match, cap tag team, 430 cap that is here in Bowler City, Hackensack, New Jersey. And we are waiting for a 10 pin to be set up because, well, someone got screwed just a little bit. The 10 pin on four, set up the 10 pin on four. Jeff and Jeremy Geller, the Gellers, father, son, tandem, currently holding your tag team championship. South Jersey Strike Force combination of Andrew Forrest and Chris Downs contending, number one contenders. They're going for their tag team titles. They're trying to bring that back to South Jersey. Right now, we have a situation of one lane giving you a lot and one game, one lane giving you a very, very little bit. It's definitely an unholy mix. And speaking of which, if you are having any issues about thinking about what you want to do during the weekend of February 4th, ain't no issue. Come on down. Either to bowl or either enjoy yourself. Bowl around with Delaware. Come on down. Unholy Alliance. If you don't have your teams in yet and you can find a slot that's not sold out, come on down. We're going to be there. Shout out to everybody who may be involved in any ranking matches or any kind of season matches. Do your thing. Get there. Get to the playoffs. Any bowlers looking to maybe venture out. We got a brawl coming up tomorrow. Garden City, AMF Garden City Lanes, January 21st. Get there. Get your teams in. 9 a.m. check in. 10 a.m. start. Better to get your, your selections in. Get your teams in now. You can come in with two combinations if you want of teams comprised of three scratch and three handicap. As we get the 10 pin set up on lane four, we are going to see what the tag situations are. Right, right now Forrest is going to stay in and he is going to go for the, the 10 pin no problem. The wefty, right-handed bowler, bowling back up from the left side. All over that 10 pin right there. Andrew Forrest right now chatting it up, trying to see what they want to do. Checking on the tags, checking to see what they're going to do. I believe Chris Downs definitely saying he wants to implore the 7, 8, 9, 10, or, or 6, 7, and then 8, 9, 10 strategy. Again, four tags. You must have that. Nothing more, nothing less. Whoever begins must throw the last shot. Not the last complete frame, but the last shot. And luckily, mercifully, 7th and falls. Almost left the 6, 7, 10 there. South Jersey Strike Force looking to capture a game, game six. Sorry, game five. We got Jeff Geller up, Papa Geller up, and then he's going up the lanes, down and in. He likes it right there. Still a little bit of footing issues. He doesn't like the way he felt on the approach there, but he definitely got through the shot and got a great result right there in his sixth frame. Going into frame number seven. We're going to see if Papa Geller right there, Jeff Geller. Let's see if he can go up and let's see if he can repeat what he just did in frame number six.
ball. Let's get out of his hand. Gets that mix. Slaps it out. Walks it out. Well, he did say that he was going to, that after that, he said that he was going to start locking this game up. Right now, he's doing exactly what he advertised. Mm -hmm. he didn't say you lied. That's if you didn't right. lock it up, you wouldn't be lying. It would just, you would not be accurate in your prediction. That would not be lying. Very good. That time, the extra pin goes down. Definitely. Right now, despite all the shenanigans happening with the pins deciding that they want to stay up or not stay up, mm -hmm. it's still only a five-pin game. Goon Squad is up. They're only up by five. Now, if Forrest can throw on some pressure here, big strike in the eighth frame coming up. Oh, boy, that ball eked out there. Well, Left no the split. one three. Well, it's the good news is no split. The bad news is that almost needed to be a strike to put any sort of pressure on Goon Squad. Well, as long as there's still frames, pressure still exists. Because all it takes. All it takes is an open. That's right. And you would hope here that he's not going to open at this point. And he won't. Maybe. Nope, he won't. <laughs> Damn it, won't. Maybe. Yeah. All right, so I think that's. <laughs> All right, E40. <laughs> All right. Two more. And we are back to Jeremy. Jeremy up. And that ball is reading early. He's getting that ball so, out so early. So Goon Squad and South Jersey, I believe they also, that's tag number two for them also as well, correct? Yes. Goon Squad with a little bit... I wouldn't say cushion, that's not much of a cushion at all, but but a little bit of an advantage being that South Jersey did not double, so they didn't need to throw a strike. They just need to make a spare to keep the lead. Jeremy started and Andrew started, so they're both at two each. Mm -hmm. So they both have two more two more tags that they need to make. Yeah. Let's see if he stays on task. Let's see if he closes the frame. Well he needs he needs to make the spare to hold on to the lead, he does. Very good. Doesn't 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 get over aggressive attacking it. <laughs> Plays it nice and smooth. Last yep. time we saw that spear was trying trying to be attacked, it actually ended up being a chop, and we saw the math drastically change. But thankfully, the other team didn't take advantage of it for well, their Goon sake. Squ Goon Squad up by five. They made a tag. Tag number three. Jeremy does not have to come in until the last shot of the game if that's what they want. Looking for a push, and he gets it. Yeah, he sits down on that one. Well, that, what that strike means is Goon Squad cannot get shut out. Mm -mm. Now they get to wait to see what South Jersey Strike Force does, and then they will figure this out appropriately. Now, yeah. obviously, what South Jersey Strike Force wants to do is make life as hard for Goon Squad as possible. Chris Downs is coming in. That's tag number three. Now they're in the same position. Ooh. Ooh, hey, it's the 10 again. Yeah, that, that 10 pin wiggles, it doesn't go down. That 10 pin has been a source of annoyance for South Jersey Strike Force this game. Because if you remember in the fifth frame, it slid over and it didn't go down. Mm. And now it just says the heck with it. I'm not even sliding, I'm just gonna wiggle. Makes it spare. Very interesting situation coming up in the 10th frame there. Well, here's the deal. If South Jersey Strike Force goes out the door, mm -hmm. that would give him a 212. Yes. That would mean Goon Squad must throw the first ball in the 10th frame to a strike. To the front desk. To the front desk. First ball coming up. Oh. Four pin. And lane three is, like I said, now, the, the showing a lot of different sides. Well, now to here's the interesting thing Chris Downs may be going to go after the spare. If he does not make the spare, they automatically lose. Mm -hmm. Because they will only have three tags, they will not have the fourth. Mm -hmm. Assuming, of course, that Goon Squad tags correctly. Now, if they both screw up, this game is a throwaway, and we do this game all over again. All right, Downs makes the spare. Forced to throw the last shot. So you mean to tell me if they both mess up, it's a wash? If they both mess up, it's a double zero, and we do this all over again. 
So in retrospect, that would mean that um, you would get a game seven somehow, some way. Yeah. Well, yes. We would, technically we would get a game seven. So it wouldn't really count as a game seven. All right. So South Jersey Storm will finish with the 200. A mark is needed. A mark is needed. Now the question call, becomes. The question desk. becomes, as we saw at the end of game three, who shall be going after it? Because, again, if they don't get it, it doesn't matter whether or not they tag. But it doesn't really matter because he throws the strike the games. Well, I shouldn't say the game's over because they still have to make that final tag. It looks like that they will because, yeah, it's, I, I, there's no way. Let's put it this way. If I'm Jeff, I don't go anywhere near the lanes at this point. Actually, you need two. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so as Jeremy Great says, advice. I need four pins and two shots. He actually doesn't. He only needs two. Yeah, I just guess you got one pin on each side and well, if you're going to do that in the 10th frame, that would be the time to do it. That would be the correct time to do that. that. That's true. He can put the ball right in the middle in the gap because they have a 206. And one of the most unimpressive finishes that I've seen in a while. Hey, as long as they finished. Well, as long as their score is better than the other score, and that's all they need. At the end of at the end of game five, Goon Squad 209, South Jersey Storm 200. Goon Squad's up three to two. And Goon Squad is looking, after being down two zip, they're looking to go win four in a row. And if they do that, they'll defend the title. That's right. And what we're seeing here is a real back and forth. And no one really, really getting out in front in terms of confidence and just knowing that they have both lanes on lock. It's really been up and down. Absolutely. And they're and they're both still, they've been searching for for about six games. Well, going into six games now. So well, Chris Downs with the strike as we start game desk. six. Now, now, as I always say, my favorite thing is game seven, and there's always one team that likes that and one team that doesn't. Andrew Forrest and Chris Downs obviously likes that, and they want to see a game seven. I don't think Pops does. Pops definitely does not want to see a game seven. Because if we don't see a game seven, that means South Jersey Strike Force loses. So mm -hmm. they definitely want to see a game seven. Okay. Jeremy says, bleep you and you're bleeping game seven. We don't want to see a game seven. Yeah. But, but what's that you got in your veins? Ice. That ice. ice cold veins. You got it? We've won four matches in the seventh, and I've always started. Oh, okay. All right, so this oh, so is... So maybe he does want a game seven. So this then. is your what fifth title defense? Uh, well, to get here. So we won it in, in, I think we won it in October. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so we've defended twice so far. This is the third defense. Yes. All right. Yeah, I, I, I thought this is the third defense, and it is. I got it right. Take Yay, go me. I got to send some text messages. <laughs> so going to second frame right now, we are tied one market piece. South Jersey Storm with a slight edge on the strike. Yeah, indeed. Um, Pops are in now has been, well, he's, he's been forward thinking, forward moving, forward pushing as he pushes that one all the way down the lane and throwing that right there with impunity, just taking out everything. Well, he's got forward everything right now except the score. Which unfortunately for him is the most important that important part of that thing that needs to be forward. Mm -hmm. Because if Chris Downs does a strike right here, it will be backward scoring. Yes. Um, Gordon Gordon's key has been down and in for Bowler City. Down and in. Down and in. Down there's down and in. There's strike. And there you go. And results, there's results, results. South Jersey Storm taking the lead in the game they absolutely must have. If they do not get it, champs remain champs. Yeah, I definitely um, call 230 or better being a winner for this game. I think 230 is a loser. Mm. Wow. Bold prediction. I, I think winning score will be well over 230. I think if you shoot 230 in this game, you lose. 
because it looks like both teams have finally figured out where to score on lane three. Jeff figured it out last game, and it looks like Chris has figured it out this game. Well, lane three is frame by frame. Let's see. Down and in. Down and in. Three in a row for Chris Downs. You're right. Or I should say downs and in. Downs and ins. And hopefully the story, well, as this, hopefully it's not going to end. And if it does end, hopefully it ends well. Well, if, it, if the match ends on this game, advantage goon squads. If the match does not end on this game, then advantage nobody as we go into game seven. Mm. Jeff right now looking to double on his own. Get to it. Oh, oh. there's a double and not the one he wants. 5-10. And uh, yeah, I was going to say that yeah, seven pin almost, stood, almost up. stood up along with the five and the ten. And he almost got a W, but not. But, but yeah, more that's like the wrong his, W. <laughs> almost in, in how the, the pins are formed. Not, not a win. Either hero ball or go for it. What do you say? Well, he's got to go for it. And he will. Uh, he's got to. And he oh, does. And he makes it. Pop don't miss fares, baby. That's what he says. And right now, that's a good point. Now, fourth frame, does Pop want to do a tag? No. Pop ain't right. tagging. We're not taking Pop out. That's right. <laughs> it's our job to talk. And Jeremy Pop, doesn't want us to talk anymore. Sure, and Pop's over there popping off on that 5-10 yeah, exactly. conversion right there. Said nothing but a spare. And he's going to show you what a strike looked like. Yeah, I see As well. The seven falls off the cliff. A little Tom Petty action on that seven pin free that, fall. That's a pop stopper right there. Uh huh. On the lane three. And and the fancy spare conversions are all well and good. However, spares do not beat strikes. And Chris Downs is one ball away from four of them for South Jersey Strike Force. Mm hmm. But it definitely keeps you in the, in the game, especially if a it certain does. situation were to happen it on does. any lane. It does. But not here. Mm -mm. Four in a row for South Jersey Strike Force. A game, a game they've got to have. And right now, they're up by 30 quickly as we go into the fifth frame. Yeah, this game is quickly moving along. Yes, it is. Uh, everybody has pretty much got their head out of their own Patootie. minds. Minds. Patootie. They got their head out of their minds. I'm going to keep yes. it. Up. I'm going to keep it above waist. And hopefully they stay above water and not drown and not wallow in sorrow riding back home. Downs right now looking for five. Oh, that one's high. Mm. All right, got away with it. Fourth, four pin. And you do have room to make that mistake on lane three. That is where the, that, that, down that oh, oil has down not and, been settled. Wait, if you go down and in, you can make that mistake. Uh -huh. If you see, and as we've seen all match and all day today, if you go, if you squirt that ball outside and wait for it to come back, that's and you're not landing, that's trouble. Oh, ooh. Ooh. And that's exactly what I'm talking ooh. about on lane three. There's a lot more labor on that side of the street than there is on lane four. Yep, a lot more Earl out there. You're absolutely yeah, a lot right. more that Earl. That Earl. Jeremy looking to double. Oh, by the way, there's that first tag. Jeff tags over to Jeremy. That's tag number one. He and said that Jeremy's been lining on that lane. He is. Mm -hmm. Very Pops nice shot. Best. Pops knows best. Now, are they going to do tag number two? No, they're not. They're keeping Jeremy in. Call for ticket number 67. Ticket number 67. And now, Over here, like we need second the ball half return. of game and six. Now we got the ball. Mm -hmm. Second half of game six. Right now, a nine pin lead. Uh, nine pin lead, I should say, for South Jersey Strike Force. If they get this game, we go to a game seven. If they do not get this game, Goon Squad retains the title, and that will be successful title defense number three. Mm -hmm. Move coming inside. Up. Oh, that ball squeaked out there. He gets away with it. Nice shot. That's Screaming the adjustment. The pins. That's the adjustment. Yeah, absolutely. Screaming at the pins. The pins say, okay. And that right there is a victory in itself for Jeremy in particular. Yes, it is. Who has had, well, not the best relationship with lane three throughout this entire No, he is not. Now, Strike Force, who started with the front four, have got to keep striking. Downs is still in there. That one got out very early, and that lane bites, and it bites hard. Yeah, that, that may have been uh, one frame too many. Because it's it looked like that he sort of lost it in the fifth frame. I understand what they wanted to do, but forced the whole entire match just had that better look. 
I probably would have stuck Forrest in, in that sixth frame. Dowd's looking to make the spare, he will. And, uh, yeah, it does sound like the thumb how it went down the lane. Thump, 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 thump. However, right now, the 30-pin lead that South Jersey strike form had has now vanished. And here comes Forrest. Forrest looking, ooh, that's high. Ooh. That is potentially disaster for South Jersey Strike Force. Meanwhile, uh, oh. Jeremy has given the sign of it is time to wrap this up and go bye bye. Pose. Well, well, sometimes you go to wrap it up a little early and then you can't really wrap it up right. And then oh. there goes your night. So hopefully it's right, not right now, blood, premature in that. Well, blood is in the water right now. They're looking to be, a, they're looking to be sharkish. Well, a spare may say otherwise if he, nope. Nope. Yeah, as, and I said before, I would have, I would have stuck, I would have stuck Andrew to begin with on lane four, and then put Chris back on lane three. What do I know? What, what I do know is that they have two, two uh, tags left. Jeremy, right now, let's end this now. Four in a row for Goon Squad as we go into the eighth frame. Yeah, they're looking at the finish line. It's right there within their view. They just got to get to it. There's tag number two. Well, let's see, let's see what's popping with for pops. Jeff. Ooh. Uh, oh, I don't know about that one. They're out of trouble. A double with the six pin. Well, oh, he's cursing out. However, they, they do have a sizable lead here in the eighth frame. So when he makes the spare, they can go out the door 249 to 242. So they would still be up by seven. And as I correctly prophesized, as of right now, 230 is a loser. You're right, you're right. I think winning score is going to be over 230. What we don't know is what team will be scoring it. Back over to Chris. On lane four, here's tag number... I'm calling 236 a winner. Three for him. Downs right now, that ball's a little flippy. Hey, oh. got the strike over, that looks good over there. On the Jersey side. <clears throat> I'm from Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn also there, buddy. Okay. All tickets up to 70 to the front desk, all tickets Ninth up frame to coming up, the they're tagging desk. here, and as I've said on more than one occasion, they probably should have started this one frame earlier. Yeah. They're down but not out. Definitely down but not out. Strike here would be huge from Andrew Force. He did make the adjustment, is it the correct one, no time. Three, five, ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely pushed that one. Forrest right now is chatting. They can tag here if they want. And if they do that, that means Chris Downs is in the rest of the way. That would be tag number four. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. Well, he needs to make this spare for them to even have, an, have a whiff of a chance. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, with, without the double, that's a lot of breathing room yeah. over oh, Goon Squad. He will make the spare. Nice pickup. Very nice pickup. He'll make the spare now. If they go out the door, it's a 222. Uh -huh. What that also means, if my math is correct, Goon Squad uh -huh. still needs two marks somewhere along the way. Mm -hmm. Two marks, it is game, set, match, they retain the title. I call 236 to be a winner. I'm sticking with 236. Well, Jeremy, right in there. That's tag number three in the ninth frame. Wants it to get there. Wants it to hook. Two pin up there. That's what, an easy spare to make. And what's the, what's the potential finish? Sorry? And, and what? And if, if they go out the door, 238. But not 236. I call it within the 230s. <laughs> it could be 230s, except if, if they hit the strike the first one in the 10th frame and end it. We'll see if they do it again. But first things first, things first, things first. We can assume that he makes a three pen. Anyway. That ball was trying to take a little early trip. <coughs> All right, 10th frame. Now the question is, who's the first ball? Jeremy says it's him. Now, interesting situation. Mm -hmm. If Jeremy does not throw a strike, 
Now Jeff will have to tag in to make the spare because if he doesn't and they miss the spare, then they automatically lose, even though they're up in the game because they do improper tagging. Very interesting situation here. Let's see what happens here. This is that for a game set match right here for the strike against him. Well, we don't have to worry about that situation because they do that. Assuming that Jeff will throw in the last shot. Then Goon Squad will successfully retain, and I'm going to chat with Jeff very quickly for one second. Here's a wrap-up, wrap up, right? A uh, single, here's a wrapper. All right, here we go. Best they can do is 222. You have a 218 right there. You need five pins. Well, there's two things that you need. Number one is that, and you know what number two is. Number two is I have to throw the last shot. Yes and yes. So we, we understand where the, what the math is, and that's why, like, that's why you let the kid figure it out and find what he's looking for. And it took him a little while to search and find the right surface, but he got there, and he made another good shot. That's what I'm talking about. He did. About. Well, here's your 230 that, that we're talking about. Uh, I said 230's a loser, and that's going to be absolutely right on that. And you said 236 could be a winner. I'm not sure about that one. Well, no, no, I called it, the 230s. I called the 230s. Well, you I said... called the 230s earlier. I said 230s. <laughs> so, stop, stop trying to get on me in the halfway point, sir. I made the boulder prediction. You just ponied up. I ordered a stiff drink, and you, and you took the milk. Oh, what's the score? Score is some sort of number up there. <laughs> At the... Yeah, yeah, I'll give you your props. It is a 236. There's I've been the here eight. before. Both of us. That's <laughs> we, we yeah. call it pretty much down the middle here. That's right. Call it correctly. All right, valiant, and I mean valiant effort by South Jersey Strike Force, and they were up. Well, yeah. they were up to zip at one point, and I can't say South Jersey Scrum, a South Jersey Strike Force lost it as much as you guys took it because you guys took it. You did. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hats off to South Jersey Strike Force. They definitely did their thing. They came here, and they were a force to be reckoned with, and they still will be. And look forward to seeing what they're going to do climbing back up uh, all the way up in the, in the cap tag team ranks. And shout yeah, out to Father and Son. Be back. Father and Son showing it how it's done. Yep. That's a fun to way to do it. Them. I, I've seen Father Sons win the tag title before, <laughs> but it is refreshing to see it happen. To yes, see it, it keep going. Family tradition going out there. Yes. All right, JJGG. Yep. J and J doing it. Thing. Everything is okay. The Gellers are good. And they are out here. GG from the Gellers. Good game. It Great is. match. And as Jeremy goes in and uh, does his little interview, I'll finish this out right now. All right, let's get the final here. Final is Goon Squad 236, South Jersey Strike Force 212. Goon Squad wins 4 to 2. And Sean Knight will be here to interview the winners right now. Thanks a lot, Gordon. I am going now to talk with our reigning defending undisputed. undisputed. That's right. Cap champions, Cap Tag Team champions of the Northeast, the Gellers, Jeff, Jeremy, J and J. You did your thing. All right. Um, Let's talk about the struggles that we had. Lane four, lane three, like two different animals. They were giving you two different meals, even though they, they're in the same venue. Absolutely. Yeah, four was a little more open. Uh, you had a little more bank room to the right. Um, three, you had to stay in and stay tight. Um, back, the ball was backing up. Um, it just was able to find it early on and let him struggle to find what he was looking for. He found the surface and carried it home in game six. Yeah, Pops definitely, you definitely came through. Um, yeah, that was very big make your spares it's not all about striking i made the seven pin early on that got us game three i want to say and then the spare there at the end it was big staying in it yeah i mean he he carried me early i had nothing um i was going through uh bowling ball roulette trying to find anything that would shape um and i kept having over under i finally was able to get into the surface footing issues as well yeah footing issues some of that was probably me but the lane was no good either. We came in earlier and we all immediately went up about four numbers in our slide pad. So, but that is what it is, and he got us there. So, we should, we should congratulate these guys. Uh, South Jersey bowled their butts off. They really did well. They put us up against it after the first two games. Came out smoking. Made us think a lot about it. Um, and and we were able to just kind of stay focused and and take a couple of opportunities. Game three was big. Um, stealing that one was was big. We did seven pin at the end there. Um, but it all, all hats off to these guys. They bowled really well. They pushed us hard for six games. 
Uh, definitely. It, it, it was a great match for us to watch. Had a pleasure calling it. Third title defense, from what I understand. Well, hey, well, we look, <laughs> we look forward to seeing you fifth. You know what? Third, I think we have to go down to Unholy, right? Uh, most likely, I think. We got to see if we're available. Yeah, yeah we got to check availability for Unholy. All right, well, look forward to seeing y'all. Hey, definitely look forward to seeing y'all there. Congratulations once again. All right, defending champs, there you go. <sighs> it was a battle, made it to game six. I called the 236. <laughs> I know my stuff. And I know that you had a good time watching. I had a good time calling UBA all day. Thanks for joining us. It could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. UBA all day.